Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, we've seen quite a few very competitive metas all throughout Warzone's history, uh, more so now in Season 3, I'd say, than ever. Uh, with all the weapon balancing we got this season, things have never been more competitive, especially when it comes to the Assault Rifle category. We've got so many different options we can use for so many different scenarios right now. Uh, it's a fantastic thing to see, but today, we're going to be breaking down what I think are the top five best assault rifles in the game, going over the best attachments for them and, uh, and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, so if you enjoy the video or if you find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. It would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed, I am always covering everything going on in COD. News, intel, updates, loadouts, you name it, it's all right here. So feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. That way you can always stay up to date. So, getting into the rankings, coming in first at number 5 as the worst of the best rifles, you could say. Uh, I've got the Krig 6 from Cold War, of course. Uh, this thing has been on the verge of being a really good weapon for quite some time. And then, once all the Season 3 weapon tuning was added in, we saw the various changes made. I feel like the Krig really became a top competitor. Uh, it's very, very mobile, especially for a rifle, so you don't really have to worry about being bogged down too much. It's relatively easy to use. It's got some like weird bounce sometimes when you fire, especially at some longer ranges, uh, given you know what sight you're using. Uh, but despite the somewhat awkward recoil at times, it's relatively easy to use. Like I said, it's pretty easy to get that recoil pattern down. Then it also has pretty solid damage and pretty good range as well. So, you know, all around, it's got a pro in almost every single category, a big plus one there uh, in almost every way imaginable. So just a very consistent, very well-balanced rifle in my opinion. And it is, I would say, one of the better Cold War options we have right now. Uh, initially here, as far as the attachments go, I am using the Agency Suppressor just because uh, primarily you are using this in medium and longer range fights. Up close, you could get away with using it, but I think there are some better options and we'll see those as we get throughout this video. Uh, but because this is a ranged rifle predominantly, uh, Agency Suppressor is definitely the way to go first and foremost. Then I've got the Takedown Barrel for that added range. It's going to be a huge help out there. I've got the field agent grip to help sort of combat that awkward bounce like I mentioned. Personally, you could go like 45 round speed mag or 60 round mag, doesn't really uh, matter too much there. 45, obviously you get that added speed, but a slightly slower ADS. 60, you get that extra ammo, but a slower reload. So sort of just comes down to what you want to use there. And also I do use the three times optic. Again, that's sort of a preference based uh, choice there. You could go for like the, uh, the suicide multi-zoom, you could go for the four times, all comes down to what you're the most comfortable with. Then moving on, next up at the number four spot, we've got my all-time favorite weapon in Warzone, the Growl 556. This weapon, pretty much ever since it was introduced, has always been very competitive. If you remember, at one point, the Growl was the go-to weapon. Everyone was using this. It was extremely, extremely good in almost every fight imaginable. It did see some nerfs along the way, but now just because of how balanced this quote-unquote meta is, the Growl is back and it's, uh, I wouldn't say better than ever, but it's still very, very competitive. All around, you can't really go wrong with this thing. Like, there's a lot of other rifles that are similar to the Growl in a lot of ways. They have good control, they have good velocity, but just when it comes down to, like, the little things, the Growl's iron sights, its general mobility, I feel like you don't really have many better choices here when you're talking about weapons that are similar to the Growl, right? Uh, obviously, there's weapons that behave in different ways that are better in other aspects, like better damage at longer ranges, uh, better mobility, but overall, the Growl, it is... Just so, so easy to use. The recoil here is almost non-existent. It's by far one of the easiest weapons to use in the entire game. Uh, the velocity is actually one of the best in the entire assault rifle class, so it's gonna fry, especially at longer ranges, and its damage is very competitive, like I said, in this meta. It's not the best, it's definitely not the worst, so again, you have a very all-around rifle that is uh, just an absolute beam. So, looking at the Grau attachments, uh, really not much has changed since it first dropped in all actuality. We, of course, have the Monolithic Suppressor, pretty much a no-brainer on any Modern Warfare weapon. I've got the Archangel Barrel for that better range, velocity, control, and, of course, the cleanest iron sight in the game. I've also got the Tac Laser for better speed and stability. You could always trade that out for, like, an optic, but, like I said, you got the super clean iron sights. I don't see the point in using an optic here. I also have the Commando Foregrip to really minimize that recoil. Then, finally, these 60-round mags on there as well. Now, coming in at the number three spot for me is going to be the Cold War AK-47. I would say this is probably the best close range rifle we have in the game outside of the AS Val. Uh, of course, though, the Val is very, very limited by its ammo capacity, so it's not the most viable in really anything outside of solos. 
Uh, but when it comes to the current meta, again, quote unquote meta, if you want to call it that, uh, the AK-47 from Cold War has been one of the most dominant close and medium range weapons we've seen as of late. Uh, people deck this out for mobility. And when you factor in, it's already really good damage. And, uh, you know, it's manageable recoil now after the, uh, the last buff that it ended up getting. You have a weapon that is insanely good for playing up close. You can get, you know, one, two, three knocks, dip out, reload, come back in and squad wipe. You can push buildings with this thing. Like it is able to compete with a lot of SMGs in this meta, which I think is incredibly fun just because most AK-47s that we've had in COD history aren't like this. This is very unique in that sense. So uh, the AK-47, a fantastic weapon in this current meta and especially good for, you know, playing ultra aggressive. So when it comes to the attachments here, we've actually got the base suppressor, not the agency or the grew or whatever. Uh, this one is actually going to end up helping the mobility some while also keeping us off the radar. So that's a huge bonus there. I've also got the RPK barrel for the better strafe speed and then also the slightly better range and velocity. Personally, I use the Tiger Team Spotlight for that better mobility combined with the Bruiser Grip for even better mobility. So you're just flying with this thing. Uh, however, if you have, uh, you know, a slight issue controlling the recoil here in some of those medium range fights, definitely swap out one of those for like the Spetsnaz Grip or the, uh, the field agent, whichever one it is on, uh, on the AK here, and you're going to have a way better pattern, and it'll make it a lot easier to use. Uh, but for mobility, strictly, those two attachments make this thing so much fun to use. Then finally, I've got the 45-round speed mag. Again, you could go up to 60. You could do just the base 45. All really comes down to preference for that one. Then at the number two spot, might be kind of a surprise, but I do have the CR-56 AMAX. Uh, of course, this was just nerfed again here recently where they actually ended up reducing the headshot multiplier even more. It basically added an extra headshot into the mix to get the most optimal TTK, which in turn makes it slightly harder to use at pretty much every single range. Uh, overall though, the AMAX is still an incredibly good weapon. I would probably say the best long range rifle in the entire game. Uh, of course, its recoil is a bit trickier than some of the other weapons that we've got, but once you get it down, once you get comfortable with that sort of visual kick that each shot has, it's overall not really all that hard to use in my opinion. Uh, the mobility really isn't all that bad. And of course, when it comes to the damage, despite the slightly worse, uh, you know, TTK and shots to kill that it requires right now, it is still, you know, very powerful, comparatively speaking. Uh, so it's a rifle that I would say is still sort of the king of long range. They've sort of been trying to dethrone the AMAX for quite some time. Um, and I think they have done a well enough job to make it not the best overall rifle. But when it comes to medium and long range fights, I mean, the AMAX is still going to hit like a truck. And as far as the attachments go, we're still using the same old, same old. We've got the monolithic suppressor, of course, the Zodiac barrel for better range, control, and velocity, the commando foregrip, the 45 round mags, then also the VLK three times optic. And I personally like to use the T-Pose reticle on that. And then when it comes to the number one rifle, some of you may have already seen this one coming, especially since the AMAX is in the number two spot, we've got the Ram 7. Uh, especially because of all the recent AMAX nerfs, I feel like the Ram has really sort of risen up. The Ram has always been a very, very dominant rifle, but uh, just because the AMAX was so good at one point, the FFAR was so good, you just didn't really have much of a reason to use it. But now, because this meta is so much more open and so much more diverse, the Ram is really starting to, you know, get its time in the spotlight, you could say. This thing has a great fire rate, so up close, medium range fights, it's gonna fry. You can honestly use this as a close range rifle, sort of similar to the AK-47, and it's gonna be able to compete with SMGs and whatnot and other close range rifles. And then at long range, if you can get the recoil down or if you mount and completely eliminate all that recoil, it still has a great TTK. Uh, in fact, to multiple parts of the body and at multiple ranges, the Ram actually has a better TTK than the AMAX. Does it take more skill to use? I guess that's sort of subjective. Both the Ram and the AMAX don't have the most ideal recoil patterns. They definitely take a little bit more time to learn, but just because the Ram is good for close range and medium range and long range, I feel like it slightly, you know, beats out the AMAX where that really just shines in medium and long range fights now. So to me, that is why I have the Ram at number one, but it's definitely a very close competition between the Ram and the AMAX for that top spot. Uh, but I digress, as far as the RAM attachments go, uh, we've got Monolithic Suppressor, the Ranger Barrel for better range and velocity and control, uh, the Commando Foregrip for better control, the 50 round mags, then also the VLK 3x Optic once more. So yeah, there you have it with all of that being said. Those are what I would consider to be the top five best rifles in Warzone right now. Uh, but I think in the future, as we get even more weapon tuning, as we see more Modern Warfare weapons buffed, which we know is coming, this meta could change even more. We could see some other ones sneak into that top five. Uh, it should be pretty interesting. But that is going to wrap things up for today. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new here or if you haven't already subscribed, I'm always covering everything going on in COD, news, intel, setups, and pretty much everything else in between. 
so feel free to subscribe, that way you can always stay up to date. As always, if you want to check out any of my partners, be sure to use code IMMORTAL for a spicy discount on all SCUF, G Fuel, Gamer Advantage, and Control Freak products. The links for all those can be found down in the description below. But once again, thanks so much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.